All right, I swear you guys are gonna love this, okay? It's so good, it's so good. Okay, so good. You're doing a great job. Ha. Ah. <clears throat> okay, sorry. A brief history of Radiohead. Oh. What? Shut up. You already talk about Radiohead like all the time? We know everything, please no more. All right, listen, I was very respectful during your presentations. I just asked for the same respect back for mine, okay? May we begin? Thanks. In 1985, at a 750-year-old boys' school in Oxfordshire, England, a band formed. Originally calling themselves on a Friday, because that was the day they would usually practice, they would casually play gigs around town until the band members had to leave for college, and the band went on hiatus. In 1991, they got back together, recorded a demo, and landed a record deal. Their new label, EMI, insisted they pick a less terrible name than on a Friday, so they chose a title taken from a talking head song. It was then that the greatest band of all time, Radiohead, was born. Clap. Clap for Radiohead. Oh, ah, no! Sorry. Whoops. September of 1992 <sighs> marked the release of the greatest debut we played of all time. The Creepy Blue. The title track was an immediate flop because the citizens of the 90s were not ready for their brilliance, and the lyrics were kind of a major downer. Radio hated it, record buyers weren't buying it, and even the band quote unquote thought it was crap. They quickly moved on to promoting their next two singles. It wasn't almost until exactly a year later that Creep broke the American Top 40 and turned Radiohead into instant stars. Tom York consistently complained about the stress of being in the public eye and was openly disdainful to the mainstream American audiences that made the band famous. This was due to the band's profound hatred of the most popular song Creep and the general public's inability to tell the difference between them and Oasis. In 1995, the band released their relatively straightforward sophomore album, The Benz, one of the greatest sophomore efforts ever made. This marked the first album-like collaboration with production wizard Nigel Goddard, a protege of post-punk Britpop producer John Leckie. In 1997, Radiohead released, inarguably, the greatest album of all time, OK Computer, giving prog rock a turn of the millennium update. The band also produced their highest charting UK single, Paranoid Android, a six and a half minute long song about a sad robot. OK Computer came out just as the internet was starting to enter everyday life. The cryptic symbolism scattered throughout the album art and lyrics synced up with the obsessiveness that online fandom showed even in its earliest days. Newly launched fan sites offered devotees forms to pick apart the album's puzzles and share theories about what it all meant. After the huge success of OK Computer, the band had the freedom to do pretty much whatever they wanted, free from label meddling. Ah. As a result, they produced the greatest album of all time, Kid A, signaling a shift to a more electronic-based sound which was even more intelligent and less pop-friendly than OK Computer. It solidified the band's reputation as the world's most aesthetically challenging rock stars. They were ahead of the curve in using the artificial website to interact directly with fans, keeping a running online diary during the recording sessions of Kira and its sequel 2001's Amnesia. The greatest album of all time. By the time the group tackled the messed up state of world politics on the more guitar heavy greatest album of all time, Hail to the Thief, the band had abandoned the radical transparency and embraced an aggressively more cryptic approach. In 2007, after leaving their label, EMI, they let fans pay what they wanted for the digital version of In Rainbows, which would become one of their best-reviewed albums. Because it's basically the greatest album of all time. The more dedicated of us scoured the record for hidden clues that connected it back to OK Computer, and used fan sites to exchange theories and talk about how if Radiohead were an ice cream flavor, it would be every flavor mixed together. Four years later, they pulled the greatest prank of all time by releasing King of Limbs digitally, a day early before its scheduled release date. Breaking new creative ground by sampling and looping their own recordings, the album had a more noticeable emphasis on rhythm. The video for the single Lotus Bar featured Tom York's virtuosic dance moves that elevated the band to the level of meme than few will ever know. 2016 saw Radiohead shift into digital obscurity by deleting their entire social media presence. This led to the release of their ninth greatest album of all time, A Moon Shaped Pool. This album represented a return to form, with songs that dated back to as far as the mid-90s, just in time to celebrate the 20th anniversary of OK Computer with a new expanded reissue, which will be selling in the hall after a presentation. Over the past two and a half decades, Radiohead has defined itself through contradiction. Making increasingly difficult albums that seemed almost intentionally designed to make them less popular while still filling arenas full of fans with the intellect to recognize the music's importance. And we think they're really, 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 really good. The end. All right.
Radio Ed is the greatest fan of all time. Hello, Peachy. I'm Tom York the Radiohead, and I would love for you to join our band. Cool, yeah.